I think what happened was once I got out, I was truly grateful because I made it out, but I really didn't hit me until the following weekend. I was, of course, you've got to remember, this is New York, a plane crash. I was in the hospital because of hypothermia. I was a lot doing a lot of media events. I was still working for my company. I had my family. So that mm-hmm. next week was extremely, just extremely, extremely hectic. hectic. I was all over the place, you know, about every TV show you could possibly be on. But the following week, I was asked to speak at our church. And when an elderly lady came up after I spoke and, and grabbed my arm and said she was questioning if there was a God, didn't believe in miracles, but I'm a physical evidence that there is a God and he does miracles. That's wow. when I started realizing that not only did I impact somebody's life, that uh, but a life of, you know, gratitude and contribution were sort of, that's when I realized that was what's most important. It's about giving back and having gratitude for what you have. What I had back was my life and life with my family and the opportunity to be able to share this, uh, this story and this, what happened to me and the lessons all over the world. Welcome to the Gratitude Podcast on www.georgeandbenta.com, where you'll hear a new story each week that will inspire more gratitude in your own life. Our mission is to inspire 100,000 people to discover how to feel gratitude and live a happy life through the amazing life stories of our successful guests and their actionable tips. And now, the host of our podcast, George and Benta. Hi, Gratitude Seeker. Welcome to a new episode of the Gratitude Podcast. Today with me, I have Dave Sanderson. He is an entrepreneur and the survivor of the most famous plane landing in history. He even had a small role in Sully, the movie about that event. You might have heard of uh, the miracle on the Hudson, or uh, maybe you haven't, and uh, you will find out an amazing story that has Dave right at the heart of it. He is a an inspirational survivor, an author, and former head of security for Tony Robbins. And his thoughts on leadership, business, and survival have made him an international sought-out speaker. And today he is with us, and he will share his uh, thoughts on gratitude and his experiences that led to who he is right now at this moment. Dave, welcome to the Gratitude Podcast. Good to thank you for having me. I'm honored to be with you today. My pleasure. So uh, for those of uh, our listeners that don't know about what happened in January 15 of 2009, can you let them know what uh, what went on and where you were at that that moment in time? Well, thank you. So uh, I was in started a day in Brooklyn, New York in my job as a sales manager. Uh, We started our day extremely early because we were working in a distribution center uh, in Brooklyn and that uh, distribution center opened up at 2 a.m. in the morning. So we started our day at 5 a.m. And that's why we got done early, about uh, 10 o'clock that morning. So I was uh, on the end of a three-day business trip, starting in Florida, going to Virginia and then ending in New York. So to get home to my wife and four kids all early, I took advantage of that. I called our corporate travel agent and spoke with her and she put me on U.S. Airways 51549, which may not mean a lot to a lot of people, but uh, as as we know now through the movie Sully and what happened that day, um, that's the plane that uh, was skillfully glided over the George Washington Bridge by Captain Sullenberger and Captain Skiles and they crashed into the Hudson River um, on January 15, 2009. I was, I was a passenger on that plane. I was in sea. 15A. And uh, at that point in time, we didn't know what was going on until he said his famous words. If you saw the movie Sully, you may have heard what Tom Hanks said, which is exactly what Captain Sullenberger said. This is your captain brace for impact. And that's when I knew and I found out other passengers likewise knew that something serious was going to happen. Uh, and he used the word dire. And I knew it was serious from my viewpoint because I was on a window seat. But about 60 seconds to 70 seconds after he crossed over the George Washington Bridge in New York City is when he crashed into the river. And fortunately for all of us, he got the plane down in one piece. It didn't break up. There were no fires. But at that point in time, water started coming into the plane immediately because of the way he impacted the water from the bottom. And then somebody tried to open up the back door because they, they did exactly what they 
we're instructed to do. Uh, if you mm-hmm. listen to the flight instructions, you, you may the closest exit may may be behind you. And I don't fault that person whatsoever because they did exactly. They actually listened. I wasn't listening, mm-hmm. uh, but that's not something you do uh, when when you get into the water. But so water started entering the plane very quickly at that point in time, and I was towards the back of the plane to see 15A. So water was about knee level where I was at. It was chest level, the waist level in the back, and ankle. Whoa from because of the way the plane was situated situated in the water so um at that point in time my game plan was just get to the aisle get up and get out but when i got to the aisle something happened to sort of change my direction that day and it was when i heard my mother who had passed away in 1997 talked in my talked in my head and said something that i heard her say years ago when i was a child is if you do the right thing god will take care of you and the right thing for me was you try to take care of other people first so I went towards the back of the plane to see if anybody needed help and got behind everybody and to make sure everybody was out and started making my way out of the plane. And as soon as I saw the first light that I saw was a 10 F on the right side of the plane. So I started to dive out like everybody else to get on the wing, but there was no room on the wing for me and the boat was already filled up. So that's why I was inside the plane for approximately seven minutes, waist deep in 36 degree water, holding onto the lifeboat wow. as close as they could to the wing. And that's how I became the last passenger out of the plane. Yeah, and this is, a, this is an amazing story. And not just a story for you because you've lived it and you, you've been through that. And for us that have had the experience of uh, flying with the plane, uh, <laughs> hearing those words raise yourself for for impact like that i I can can imagine how scary um that can be for for the people in the plane and uh to 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 hold yourself to 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 be able to to be uh centered in that in that situation is is just amazing i i think it was uh, that's why i I named the book moments matter because what i realized that all those moments moments in my life that you don't ever think that matter. And I never thought that mattered all were actually there for a reason and to give me the uh, certainty and give me the, the training that I never thought that I really had to be able to do something like I and everybody else in that play did. It was definitely a team effort to get, uh, get that accomplished. Not only the captain and first officer, but the entire crew and all the passengers to make that day go from a tragedy to a miracle. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. From, from what I uh, understand, all of the passengers were uh, okay, right? Nobody okay. died. No, but nobody died. It was the uh, first time in aviation history that uh, a plane got into the water and there was no uh, no fatalities. That's amazing. It, it, indeed, it was really a miracle. But how did that moment inspire gratitude in, in your own life, in your own experience? I think what happened was once I got out, I was truly grateful because I made it out, but I really didn't hit me until the following weekend. I was, of course, you've got to remember, this is New York, a plane crash. I was in the hospital because of hypothermia. I was a lot doing a lot of media events. I was still working for my company. I had my family. So that mm-hmm. next week was extremely, just extremely, extremely hectic. hectic. I was all over the place, you know, about every TV show you could possibly be on. But the following week, I was asked to speak at our church. And when an elderly lady came up after I spoke and, and grabbed my arm and said she was questioning if there was a God, didn't believe in miracles, but I'm a physical evidence that there is a God and he does miracles. That's wow. when I started realizing that not only did I impact somebody's life, that, uh, but a life of you know gratitude and contribution were sort of, that's when I realized that was what's most important. It's about giving back and having gratitude for what you have. What I had back was my life and life with my family and the opportunity to be able to share this, uh, this story and this, what happened to me and the lessons all over the world. This is, this is amazing. And to, to give hope, to give uh, such a, such a strong inspiration to provide such a strong inspiration to so many people is, is just, Wow. <laughs> I, I love it. And um, since then, I know that you've been doing a lot of work, inspiring other people, sharing this story. Um, what, does, what did 
gratitude mean for you before the event and what did gratitude mean for you after it? Great distinction and great question because before I thought I had a lot of gratitude. I was grateful for my parents. My parents passed away. My mother passed away when she was extremely young. Um, and my father passed away a couple years after the plane crash. But I realized that uh, yeah, before that, when I thought was gratitude, and I was great, I thought I had gratitude. You really learn after you go through a life, a traumatic life experience, and people do this all the time. I'm not the first one, or will be the last one. Whether it's a fire, a flood, a health scare, whatever it may be, a hurricane, a tornado, something's going to happen, which I call a personal plane crash. What I realized is, you know, we all should be grateful for every moment and live in the present uh, for every moment because. Those things can change in, a, in an instant, as we saw, unfortunately, recently in Florida with the unfortunate shootings and down in the high school in Florida. Things can happen in a second that changes your entire life. So, you, you know, having gratitude and having being pre- living in the present instead of living in the past where a lot of people live um, really was one of the biggest changes in my life. This is such a good distinction and such a good perspective i i really didn't think of um the florida shootings in this way and it's true like we really never know when when there are so many things that can happen um what can happen to to the ones that are dear dear for us um and yeah we it's a really good reminder for us to to appreciate them and to appreciate the the present moment and and what we are enjoying right now, actually. Yeah, most definitely. And, and yeah, the other side of that is giving back and contribution where, you know, I, I've got a new appreciation. I realized I had a new, I had appreciation, but I had a new appreciation for why giving back um, and being able to contribute, whether it's your time, your talent or your treasures. And that's one of the reasons I do what I do in addition to why I support and speak on behalf of the Red Cross, because unfortunately they're there at every traumatic moment. The Red Cross is not there just to, when somebody is happy and you know, without pain, they're always going to a painful situation, whether that's here in the United States or in Europe or wherever that may be. So, you know, being able to give back is a major, major thing. Uh, I think everybody is one of the human needs that Tony Robbins talks about, but I think it's one of those driving needs to, once you realize and make that shift, uh, all of a sudden your life becomes more fulfilled. Definitely. I can totally relate. And it's really um, a different perspective on life. And I don't know if you've read, but I uh, recommend this book to my to my listeners, Man's uh, Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Yes. Uh, did you read it? I did read it, and I actually wrote a blog about it uh, last year because I think oh. it's a very impactful book. And yeah. the reason I wrote that blog, Bento, is because we had I had a couple of neighbors that, uh, that I they needed some help, and I helped them one day. And as I was waiting for my milk and cookies, because who would turn down milk and cookies from <laughs> Cook, right? That's that's you don't do that. I was looking <laughs> at their books on their coffee table, and they were from concentration camps, and and what I realized when they came out and they showed me their inside of their arms with their numbers on them, I realized they were in, in those camps. And, you know, that's when I, I start realizing and why re, re, one of the reasons I wrote that blog about Victor Franco and the search of meaning. That's amazing. Where can we find it by the way? That's a great question. It's on my website and um, I will, uh, I think it the blog is called suffering into purpose. Well, we'll make sure you get that. Uh, All right, we we will we will put this in the show notes and in the description of this episode, because I think it's it's a very interesting perspective and the book is great and uh, I, I think it can be helpful for for many of our listeners to to get that kind of perspective on, on how life can get and uh, on where the power actually lies and what we can do about our life right now, being inspired by that uh, particular situation. But what I also wanted to ask you is, uh, being head of security for Tony Robbins, uh, you've seen him in action many times, right? A hundred of times. How does he do gratitude? Or what did you see uh, related to gratitude that uh, really inspired you? Well, I... 
I, I really, I saw him hundreds of times. I traveled the world with him. I was very honored to be around him and, and be able to help him have his mission and serve his mission. Uh, but one of the things I, I, two things I would say, number one is he talks about a story when he was first out on his own and speaking, he had no money and he, he gave a little boy some money to be able to take his mother out to dinner. And he mm-hmm. said he felt so much gratitude at that moment. He realized it was all about having gratitude. But then I was at an event and I, I forget exactly where it was, whether it was Los Angeles or Dallas, I forget exactly. But I remember a lady standing up to speak to him and she said, I pray for your health. And she said, I have gratitude for your health. I never heard it put in that perspective, but I think what he and I, what I took from, and I think he took from, and I can't speak for him, of course, is mm-hmm. that, you know, when someone prays for your health, that's pretty serious. I mean, it's, you know, if you don't have your health, you don't, you're not able to do your mission. Exactly. And I really believe that that was something that's so impactful to him and really got me. I mean, I really was taken aback by that. I, I've never seen anybody pray for somebody's health. And so that really showed a lot of gratitude from her heart and showed, I think, everybody in that audience that, you know, have gratitude for what you have. And ha- one of the things you have and you should take care of is your health. And because you can't serve if you don't have that. I love it. And I think that's a great example of, of gratitude expressed and actually put into, into action and appreciating someone so much that, that you want what's best for them and you actually do something about it. That's that's really inspiring. But Taking action, like it says in the Bible, taking action. Is, exactly, exactly. But sometimes I I think you, you have those days as well that gratitude isn't the first thing that comes to mind, isn't that easy. What do you do when it's hard to be grateful? Well, the one thing I, 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 I tell you what I do, because it's changed over the last several years. And after the, uh, after the miracle on the Hudson, I was on the, uh, the executive board of our church and we were in a meeting and things weren't going real well. But I have to say it was one of those meetings where things were sort of really flowing really well. And I looked at the, our minister. I said, I said, you know, Reverend Kent, I said, I know, I mean, I have to know that Jesus, every day in Jesus' life wasn't pixie dust and sunshine. I said, he had to have some bad days. He had to have those days where, you know, he said, well, I just can't believe this is going on. But what did Jesus do when he had a bad day and didn't have gratitude in his, in his heart? He said, what, you, what Jesus would do every those, those times you go out back and pray, and pray for God for gratitude. And I'm like, whoa. So that was one of the things that really, you know, sort of gave me a lesson to me is, when I get to that ingratitude state where I'm not focusing on it and, and uh, I'm, I'm focusing more on myself, on my personal significance, I've got to go out and I've got to take a moment and pray. Does God give me more gratitude so I can see the bigger picture instead of it's all, it's not about me. Because you know, one of the things I've, I've got above my desk right now, which you saw in my office a few minutes ago, it's, it's not about I, it's about why. And it's about, mm. it's about a bigger picture, not about me. I love this. I love this. We, we indeed, we, we sometimes forget, especially when, when we get stuck in our head and we think about things that are uh, related to just ourselves, that we, we just forget about uh, the bigger picture, about why, the bigger why. And I think this is such a good idea to, uh, to pray, to ask for, the feeling of gratitude. Yeah, I think this is really good. And believe it or not, I think it's the first time that I hear it, even though uh, I've interviewed over 80 people by by this moment. This this is really good. So yeah, thank you. So um, beyond this uh, exercise, what do you do consistently to to continue to be grateful each and every day? Uh, one of the things I write in my book, Moments Matter, but is about uh, the power of rituals. And I'm not the first one to come up with this. Canley, most successful people have rituals that they do every single day. And it's about discipline and putting yourself in that, that mindset. And so how I, what I do every day before I start the day, first thing I do is I pray when I get out of bed, just thank you for having me another day. Cause Canley, 
I've realized after the plane crash, every day is a gift now, where before I took everything for granted. I'm not, I, I have to admit, I, I just took things for granted. Things are going to work out. And, but now I have, I pray for, have every day for thank you for giving me another day and give me, hopefully give me the opportunity to speak to somebody else today about, about, uh, you know, what happened and how miracles still do occur. But the other part of that ritual is I go back and this is where it really started for me when I heard that lady talk, say that to Tony. And so I start the day and have gratitude for my temple, which is my body. And I, the first thing I do after I get up and pray is I, I work out and do something to enhance my body to make sure I have the energy and stamina and focus to be able to go out and serve at a higher level. So and I think that's part of gratitude too, having gratitude for God's giving you a body and a, and a place to be able to, and the energy to do it, you might as well use it to the best advantage. So having gratitude for your body likewise. Exactly. And in my experience, we we get to see how important our body is and how important our health is when we don't have it anymore. Like when we aren't able to do all of the things that we need to do and we get to do in life, that that is when we, we think of all the amazing things that we, we could do. And another thing that I think is pretty amazing about you and your life experience, it, it's like you were reborn somehow. This is how I, let's say, perceive uh, your experience because uh, until that point, life was... Uh, was going like linearly, like nothing huge has happened most probably, right? But after that moment, you... So I'm trying to put myself in your shoes as, as much as possible. And I, um, I'm thinking that it's really another perspective knowing that you got to live another day and years and that you got to to have all of the experiences that, that you got to have after that experience in which you could have not been here anymore. Like you could have died. Right. Most definitely. It was, it was on the edge, even after we got out of the water, cause I had hypothermia and my body was, you know, you know, 94 degrees and going down and things were shutting down. So yeah, what you said, you know, resonated because of something my, my minister said, I was, he he had only heard me speak into in a in a faith based situation, but I was asked to speak that year for the nine eleven services here, which mm-hmm. in the United States is a big deal. Nine eleven is a big big date in the United States, and I was asked to be the keynote speaker. And I said, I told him, I said, come on, and hear me speak in more of a public setting instead of a faith based setting. So he heard me speak, and we were walking back to the car. He said. He said, it, 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 we're Christian and we're not Methodist. He said, in the Methodist faith, we don't believe it. We believe in there's one baptism. You baptize once into the faith. But he's like, he said, you like, you went into the water and you got rebaptized and it was all, it was, the skies opened up and a whole different, a whole different world came. He said, that's, he said, we don't believe in doing that, but it's sort of like what happened to you is you got rebaptized. I think it's exactly what happened. It, the skies opened up, opportunities opened up because of uh, having gratitude and focusing on contribution and connection instead of my personal own personal significance. Wow. I, I really didn't make the connection, but it makes so much sense. And it really is like, uh, like a baptism and wow. Like, like a second chance on, on life somehow. And I think this is important for, for, for me and for, for our listeners to think about the fact that by, by putting themselves in your shoes, we can get a sense of how, how that may feel, how, mm-hmm. how that is actually. And knowing that we, we are all given uh, another day of life in which we have many opportunities and possibilities to, to make it amazing. And it's really a gift because at that po- moment in time, it it might have actually stopped forever, right? Uh, most definitely. I, was, I'm, I and I think all of us were very blessed and fortunate to have another opportunity to um, to live and share what happened that day. And that's why I do. I think 
God opens up pathways for people and gives and gives, he wants you to take action. So I'm very blessed to be able to be alive today. And every day above ground to me is a, is a blessed day. <laughs> this is wonderful. And um, by the way, what do you talk about in your, in your speeches? Like uh, when you go and speak uh, for the Red Cross, I know that you have a um, particular story, a particular way of inspiring people that have been through different kinds of situations. So I um, thank you for asking because I, I share the story of what happened. I give people a perspective on what happened, and I call it the backstory to the untold story, where if you saw the movie, Sully, it's called The Untold Story. I tell the back, my backstory to that untold story so people can get a glimpse of what was going on inside the plane. But then what I do, depending on who my audience is, if it's a Red Cross experience, I, I talk about the power of contribution and giving back. If it's a corporate experience, I talk about leadership and teamwork and persistence, those key skill sets that played out that day that you can use in your business. If it's a faith-based, I talk about how God intervened that day uh, during and after the plane getting it down and into the river or now one of the biggest things I talk about now, Benta, and I did a Ted talk on this <clears throat> is about how to grow from a traumatic life experience. Because what I've realized, as I mentioned, I think earlier is I realized that everybody in this life will have a, what I call a personal plane crash moment. Something's going to happen because no one ever gets through life without something happening. that's going to challenge you. Uh, I don't, I, I have never met anybody, whether it's a health situation or something else, so how do you grow from those traumatic life experiences instead of going into a depressed state or even worse, PTSD, which so many people do when they face those kind of experiences. So that's really one of the new areas that I really delve into. And you know, my TED Talk is called Bouncing Back. Uh, it was out of Queens University in Kingston, Ontario. It was out last year. And you can go on YouTube and watch it. I talk about how to grow from a traumatic life experience. Yeah, I did watch it. And I think your perspective is so powerful. And like you said, many people or most people go through some kind of uh, traumatic experience. And um, it's not about like with problems. We, we do have problems, even though we might do our best to avoid them, for instance. Um, but how do we deal with them is where our power lies. And I think that... Awesome. That's exactly right. I think what Tony teaches and I just <clears throat> espouse part of that is, you know, people look at problems as negative. If you reframe and look at po problems as positive and all you want to really do is, is get a better quality of problem. You know, I mean, that's, <laughs> and that's what you try to do because everybody's going to have a problem in their life, whether it's financial, emotional, relationship, health, everybody's going to have a problem at some point. So it's getting better quality of problems is what, how successful people, how they respond to because you can respond to smaller problems. All that does is build your character to be able to handle the bigger problems later in life. Exactly. Exactly. And um, what do you advise people to do that have been through this kind of situation that uh, might lead to depression or PTSD? Well, I, I share the strategies that I did. And, and one of the strategies that I did is pretty basic, but I don't see a lot of people that do it um, is, you know, it's a lot of people who go through a traumatic life experience get into their heads and it says, why did this happen to me? Why did this always happen to me? You know, and they start saying that so much in their head and they start getting inside and it gets so, it gets so deep in their body that they can't get out of it. And so one of the things I did in a strategy I used was that I got it out of my body by speaking and getting it. And I think that's a great way because, you know, you get it out of your body, you can't, re it can't reside in your body. So that's why I speak so often because every day something new, something different comes up about that, that day or those, those days uh, afterwards. And for me to have the opportunity to go out and not only share it, but get it out of my body, it gives me the opportunity to, to, to not let it get into my body too deep to have, have a depressed state or, or even PTSD. And, and the second way is I talk about in my TED Talk is, and Tony teaches this, is it taught me is how to manage your state, how to manage your mind. And, you know, I show people there's three ways to do that through your physiology, the way you move your body, the internal dialogue you have, or the questions you ask yourself, or what you focus on. So those are two of the strategies that I did, I still do, and I show people how to do to hopefully uh, overcome or, or make progress towards um, 
growing from their traumatic life experience. This is really, really good. And I was thinking uh, one brilliant thing that you're doing with this, with the, with the first one, is that you're actually, uh, from what I understand, you're actually creating new positive associations with that particular event by um, sharing them, by uh, inspiring other people. And also you, you mentioned the, the question that people tend to ask themselves. And I, what, one of the things that I love most about Tony's work is his work on the power of questions and right. um, the kind of questions that we ask ourselves lead us to uh, emotions, lead us to actions and lead us to um, the type of life that uh, that we actually get to live and i think this is very powerful and uh, i think it's brilliant that you that you got it in your um in your way of helping people deal with this so we are nearing the end of our time together and i i want to ask you who are the people that you appreciate in your life that uh, have had a positive impact and Maybe even if you want, let us know who are the people that came into your mind and into your heart at that moment. Well, thank you. So the last moment before the plane crashed and people have asked me that in interviews and I tell people it's a very surreal moment. And I, I, uh, before I share what it is, I'll contrast it with somebody who, who went to my church who survived the earthquake in Haiti. She was in a building and under rubble for several hours before she was rescued. And when she got back home and we were went into a room and sort of basically trading stories, we both had a very similar experience hmm. that that last moment when you think you're going to die and you, you think that you may not come back is the movie of your life runs before your eyes. And you see things with such clarity uh, from your life that you maybe had scenes that you were, four or five years old and all of a sudden you're seeing things you were doing and things that have happened and people you're associated with. So I think that, uh, you know, that gave me great clarity of the purpose of why I was here. And I think that's, that sort of helped me define my mission. But second, to answer your question more directly, you know, the last person I really thought about was my wife uh, mm -hmm. before we crashed. Um, and Kelly, we were having some communication challenges because I, and I, this goes back to some of the things that I teach about the, the modality of how you speak to people versus visual versus auditory versus kinesthetic. And I think we were having those challenges because she's a very auditory person. I'm a very visual person. But what I realized that she was the last person I thought about right for impact. So that was, um, that was not, I, that was the thing that I think really sort of said, you know what, maybe I need to make a shift in my life. Maybe I need, maybe I need to practice what I preach about mm -hmm. uh, maybe speaking more to her and her modality so I can understand her. She th feels like she's understood instead of me just letting it go by and say, yeah, I got it. Move on. Yeah. That, that's quite, quite deep and quite, quite important for us to, to take into consideration. So um, where can our audience find you? Where can our audience see your work? Well, I appreciate that. The, uh, the best way is to go to my website at davesandersonspeaks.com. That's where uh, most of my, a lot of my material, not most where I always add any content, but how you can get in touch with me or check me out on my Facebook uh, page at Dave Sanderson Speaks or my LinkedIn page at David Sanderson or Twitter at Dave Sanderson too. But that said, the real way, if you want to sort of hear where I'm going and how things are progressing is I've, I've been very honored to be able to do a show on Amazon Alexa. Uh, daily flash briefing um, and it's called Dave Sanderson declassified and what I do every day is I take a topic and we'll bring somebody on with me and we, we declassify that topic and so people can understand what you know, how to you know how to manage your mind and we'll take it within five minutes and we'll break down the steps to be able to do it so people can take away practical steps on a daily basis of new content from not only me, from but people from all over the world that I, uh, I'll bring on it but I, one of the things I tell them is they got to be able to do it in five minutes. We're not, this is not a 30 minute radio show. This is in five minutes. We want to get, we want to get people an action. So that's what, that's what I'm really more excited about now about anything else I'm doing besides speaking. And that sounds really cool. Like five minutes really to the point. I love the idea. 
So thank you so much for being here with us and uh, for sharing your story and the insights that have uh, have come to the surface from the story. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you for listening to our weekly podcast. Help us reach our goal of inspiring 100,000 people by sharing this podcast with your loved ones, with your Facebook friends. And if you loved this episode, please write a review on iTunes.